Hello everyone, this is Carl Freund again with Cambrian AI Research. And today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Jeff Gelhar. If you haven't met Jeff before, he uh, leads the software effort and is at Qualcomm and is the Vice President of Technology. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for joining us. So let's just start at a high level. Tell us about the philosophy and the strategy of the software behind Snapdragon on the mobile and edge devices and also uh, Cloud AI 100. Yeah, so, um... Thank you again for having me. Uh, the, the philosophy is kind of an interesting word. I mean, I think the, the thing that we would focus on is really, um, you know, what are we really trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve uh, capacity for our, you know, OEMs, customers, this ranges from mobile customers, IoT, automotive, and like you mentioned, cloud, to really gain access to our, you know, best in class power performance of the hardware that we're building and have complementary software that, you know, really fits together. So. We work really closely with the hardware uh, teams to provide sort of a best in class experience, you know, across the whole range of, um, of, of our products and helping our OEMs really to optimize the kind of networks that really power AI networks that power their experiences, right? So in the case of uh, mobile handsets, for example, a lot of your camera experiences are driven by AI. And in a typical, you know, product cycle, we'll help our customers launch you know, hundreds of neural networks. Um, your average, you know, mobile camera uh, probably has 10 or 15 or 20 different networks that are doing different things like nighttime lighting and HDR, and video effects and this kind of stuff. And that's really kind of what we're focused on. And then rounding out the sort of, you know, that's really on device, on platform kind of development kit, but then rounding that out with tools that help our OEMs and our customers optimize their network. So our like model efficiency toolkit, for example, it provides quantization techniques, compression techniques, and so on. And of course, we'll continue to add to those techniques, a whole portfolio of how really can you take these very complicated networks from, let's say traditionally from the cloud, they don't run on device or don't run in an automobile and bring them onto device without sacrificing performance, without sacrificing accuracy and so on. So that's really kind of our, our strategy, uh, co-working the hardware and software together to provide that, you know, end experience for our for our customers. Sounds good. Sounds makes sense to me. So, let's just go one level deeper. Can you describe what are the major components of the uh, development set? Yeah. So, particularly, let's say take something like the Snapdragon Neural Processing SDK, which, which is the arguably the most popular SDK for on-device, uh, you know, AI development. Uh, in mobile today, you know, typically a, 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 an OEM will have developed a neural network to solve, like I said, a, a camera relighting or a nighttime photography or a super resolution kind of problem. And they come to us and, uh, you know, first of all, we give them the toolkit. So hopefully they don't come to us, they, the toolkit standalone and it solves their problem. But when we work together, it's frequently, okay, they've got a design in TensorFlow or in PyTorch and they've done all their sort of off device analysis and they're happy with their results and our tools first we take those frameworks ingest them right so read those formats help quantize them right so in a lot of cases we're running 8-bit workloads on our custom hardware or mixed precision say 8 and 16 kind of workloads um, then we provide an environment in which they can then deploy that on the device and run it you know on our one of our accelerators say our hexagon uh, processor um, and then they can sort of see the results. And in an ideal deployment, you know, they're going to get the same results uh, on the device that they got, you know, when they did their sort of off-target development. And if they don't, then, uh, you know, part of what we provide are tools to help them, you know, analyze that uh, situation and, and kind of root cause by what, what might have gone wrong. Uh, so that's really kind of the, the nominal life cycle of deploying something on your device. So how, how would I take that application then and that model? and be able to run it on Cloud AI 100? Is that something customers and partners want to do? And if so, what's the process? So we, um, yeah, that's a great question. We're, we're aiming to, to uh, provide the same kind of abstraction. So we introduced the AI Engine Direct uh, on, our, on our mobile product line, and we're taking that same concept, that same API will be available into the cloud. And so uh, you will be able to follow more or less the same a workflow, take a, let's say, PyTorch model or TensorFlow model, and then bring that on to you know, our cloud product. So our aim will be to 
you know, really provide us common kind of on-ramps for our various products. And if you need a little tiny IoT device, we'll have it. And if you need a cloud device, we'll have that too. Did I read, read correctly in preparing for this that you also support um, custom op development? Yeah, so. we do. And so um, that's, um, you know, one of the questions we get from our customers, as I said earlier, you know, ideally they get our toolkit and they're self-sufficient is, you know, they're very innovative. I mean, AI is an exploding space. And so one of the areas where we, we've really uh, been asked our customers, by our customers to provide access is, hey, look, we don't want to have to tell you all of our kind of little secrets that make our models better. Um, and so we have, um, we, we allow customers to write in our Hexagon SDK, for example, or in the case of Adreno with OpenCL, they can write, um, what we like to call custom ops or user defined operations. Um, and they can also start to do that now with TVM. So TVM is a relatively newer uh, domain specific AI compiler. And so they can also choose that for Hexagon and, and do the same thing there. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. So one of the things about Snapdragon is you've got a lot of different blocks on there, right? You've got a lot of different engines for those DSPs or CPUs, GPUs, AI engines. How does a developer think about all that and how much complexity does that present to the development process? Right. So going back to this idea that we want to provide a unified kind of experience and looking back at like the Snapdragon um, neural processing SDK. One of the reasons we built that was to specifically provide that sort of abstraction so the developers could choose to run on certain processor blocks based on their use case. So they could say, oh, I'm going to use a CPU for something. So I want to offload this neural network to the GPU, right? And, or I'm going to do rendering on the GPU. So I'm going to offload my neural network work to, let's say, Hexagon. And so we provide that kind of access and make it very easy for them to kind of pick and choose what they want. Now within Hexagon, you know, in the Snapdragon 888, we introduced this sort of next generation kind of fully hybrid uh, AI accelerator. And you can think of that like three kind of accelerators in one, you know, we've got scalar things, we've got, you know, single vector units, uh, traditional vector processing kind of stuff, and we've got a matrix unit, right? And so one of the things that our software toolkit, you know, does provide a lot of abstraction is the developer doesn't need to worry about what parts of their neural network are going to be best run on those various units. They get to view that unit as like one kind of fully integrated execution environment. And it's really up to my team to make that transparent for them. And so by doing that, you're right, they don't have to worry about the nitty gritty. And yet they still have choice in terms of deployment when you kind of zoom out and say, oh, I've got a workload that's really suited for GPU, or I have a workload that's really suited for Hexagon. They can run two workloads, one that's good for Hexagon and one that's good for GPU in parallel or whatever their application you know, really requires without worrying about the little nitty gritty of what's happening kind of inside those processors themselves. Well, that sounds ideal. That sounds ideal. You give them the choice of optimizing for a particular type of uh, logic as well as tools that sort of um, abstract above that and make it simple to develop. Yeah, that's that's the goal. And we, uh, goal. I think we hit the mark most of the time. So we're yeah. happy with that. And that's, that's a, that unified or fused AI pro engine. That's right now, that's just on the 888. Uh, yes, it's, it's been introduced and, and of course, like so many of our technologies, it waterfalls down, waterfall, through, yeah. you know, or cascade maybe as a more pleasant way, um, <laughs> or other products. And so um, you'll, you'll start to see that emerge in, in other products and in different configurations. So it's a sizable block. We mm -hmm. can choose to add and subtract sort of, you know, the capacity of these various units. Um, and so you'll see it kind of reconfigured in bigger and smaller combinations in, in various product families. That, that makes sense. Give the customer a lot of choice, especially when you're talking about data center versus uh, uh, high end, you know, premium mobile versus, um, you know, mid-range mobile platform. Or IoT I mean, even, right? Yeah, IoT. Yeah, absolutely. And automotive, right? You've got uh, a lot of efforts going on in automotive where you've been building a lot of strength. Yeah, I think ADAS is a super uh, important market for us. And in general, I, I think I like to tell people you can't do ADAS without AI. Um, I think that's a fair uh, a statement. And so, yes, we have, we have products that use, in some cases it uses our 
very highest end server class silicon for, for uh, automotive, as well as, you know, like in cockpit, you know, glass cockpit types of applications are very GPU intensive, but there's a lot of neural networks happening in the automobile, like driver monitoring, is the driver paying attention? Are they like, you know, checking their texts, you know? And so yeah, on. Yeah. So put you, your hands back on the wheel. <laughs> yeah, you'll start to see sh even shorter full autonomy, of course, we'll start to see automobiles taking advantage of AI. And some of those, while they're super important, are of course less demanding than say full autonomy. So again, our product portfolio allows our automobile customers to kind of pick and choose and put those chips in the cockpit as one set of demands and you know, autonomy as a more stringent set of demands. But again, back to the same thing with the same toolkit. So I can assure you that our partners, Galaxy and you know our high OEM partners are using the same toolkit that our automobile customers are using like in the cockpit today. That's excellent. And of course, robotics as well. So that's a, that, that's, that's, that's a nice model you've, uh, you've developed there. And your platform portfolio, I think, uh, at least if you talk to data center customers, they're, they're really not aware of the breadth and strength of your power efficient platform from mobile through, through the, the data center. But being able to have one software development platform and be able to dial in what you need in terms of how much performance and how much power, um, and how much price uh, you can withstand. That's uh, that that gives you guys a significant strength. So, tell me, Jeff, what do you think? What what are you looking at next? What's what's on the horizon for you? Without disclosing anything that you know sure, is sure. coming in this next next uh, summit, but uh, well, yeah, so we don't want to give away surprises. Although, of course, we're always working on some fun new thing. Um, you know, I would say thematically. Um, just to remind you know your listeners, uh, you know power performance like you just mentioned will remain a, a focus of ours, and uh, making the software you know more efficient, so that they don't need to worry about you know how do I reach that power efficiency? It just sort of happens for me, and you, that'll be evidenced by like our in, lift in benchmarks, and even as once chips are launched, we frequently make software updates that will lift benchmarks because we're you know we're making the software better in ways that are transparent to the developers, frankly, right? Like we just talked about. So that's a theme. Um, even more developer-oriented tools. In other words, we want to be more and more flexible, but we also want to be more and more sort of self-service. So like the custom ops, like the you know efficiency toolkits, like the you know, accuracy analysis tools, you will see us you know, do more there and try to sort of put the power in the hands of the developer so that they can be more you know, self-sufficient and independent. And then I think, you know, in terms of AI technology itself, um, you know, NLP, which people like to talk about, so natural language processing and, and voice processing is something that, you know, I think every year we make kind of little strides on, but the fundamental underpinning technology that drives those innovations like transformers, like Work kind of networks, they um, they keep surprising us about the kinds of applications, and so that's an area I think of growth for the industry, and certainly something we're paying attention to. Um, and so that, of course, brings new requirements for the toolkit. But our idea would be to again lower the barrier to entry, make it possible to run these complicated networks on device. Uh, for all the various things you want voice control over, and then other things you can actually do with these transformer style networks, um, and you know make them run efficiently, and add that as a as a piece of the portfolio. Uh, it's, it just strikes me, amazes me. Five years ago, none of us were thinking about AI on the handset, but Qualcomm was. You guys have been at this a long time. This is not a recent idea. You didn't wake up in the morning and say, "Oh, let's put AI on the phone." Uh, and so you guys saw this coming ahead of most of us, and so my my hats off. I always watch your use cases with a great deal of interest because uh, we're just making this technology so much more transparently available and useful to uh, to so many different users around the world. Well, and it, it, thank you for that. I think I think we were early, and uh, and I appreciate the acknowledgement. Uh, yeah, we've been at it for over ten years in one form, and this toolkit's been shipping for six or seven. Uh, uh, years now, and so of course it gets better, and, and we learn things and improve it for our customers. But I do think that AI has brought to, let's say, mobile principally, because that's the thing we all have in our pocket, 
but you'll start to see more and more of course you have a google home or you have a ring or you have these other products um people i think are unaware of how pervasive ai already is in their lives and they take for granted that their camera can take pictures at night and you know retouch stuff and all this transparently um but that's really you know from a technology point of view that's the exciting stuff that's what we do what you talk to i'm sure a lot of other people about yeah. in the industry all the time that's the magic that powers you know these experiences and that's really what what we're about about innovation and about making sure that our customers can add the hardware and software again to strike that that point at the power performance that is really demanded if you're going to carry this thing around all day or it's going to be in a robot or whatever. Um, that's really important. And so I think we're doing a good job, I hope, uh, you know, providing that to our customers and, you know, the whole package together. Absolutely. I was out hiking, hiking in the mountains last weekend with somebody and he was talking about his incredible camera and how what, what great low light performance it has and the image quality was awesome. And I took his camera and phone, I looked at it and I said, yeah, that's got a that's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon in it. He says, what's that? I said, the beauty is you don't need to know. <laughs> you just get the benefits from it. <laughs> yeah. So, so the consumer and consumer experience being super positive. And I'm glad you pointed out that, you know, he had the right brand in his pocket. That's a good Yeah, he did. He did. He did indeed. Well, Jeff, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking with you. I look forward to seeing you again soon. And look forward to hearing what you guys have, have planned later in the year for next generation platforms for AI. Thanks again for your help. You're always welcome back. Give me a call. Okay. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Great Thanks talk a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.